Hey YouTube. <clears throat> it's a nice sunny day today, Wednesday. Thank goodness that, uh, or thank God I should say that we're got some sun. Whenever the sun is shining, I feel like doing stuff. When it's not, it's hard to get going. But um, what I'm going to be doing today is uh, Okay, I got sidetracked with all the cars that traffic from the gas well guys. Anyway, what I'm doing today is I'm going to pick up a permit from DCNR to be able to cut firewood. Um, they've cut a lot of trees down along this right of way here. And there's some dead trees that would make good firewood just like this one right here. So you have to have a permit to be able to pick it up and cut it. And that's what I'm going to go do. So I'll let you just know how that process works and everything. Uh, one of the good things also is I have a contract with uh, one of the uh, gas well people to bring me the trees from the next um, gas well that they built, which is actually about three quarters of a mile away from my house. So that'll give me um, a lot more trees to work with. I had in the contract it calls for me to get everything on uh, down to six inches. The rest of the stuff they're gonna chip up. Now that's supposed to be coming this uh, spring, and uh, I was given the okay about that already, so that's a good thing. But like I say, uh, along this right of way to cut trees down, and there's no sense in leaving them rot. And if it's but the way it works, uh, and I'm not positive about this permitting thing because it's the first time I've done it. But um, the way it works is you go buy a per, you, you, yeah, you have to buy a permit to get firewood. It's 20 bucks a cord, from what I understand. So I'm gonna just get get enough for one cord, and then if I see that there's more here, then I might get more. There wasn't a whole lot of stuff because they had originally trimmed this. They cut the trees down when they put the poles in. So the trees that were standing were saplings, but they also widened it a little bit further than they did when they initially cut the pole or put the poles in. That's why there's some trees. Not many, but some. Okay guys, so I went and I picked up the permit. Um, the permit is $20. It lasts for, I think, 15 days, they said. So, he gave me until the 21st, I think it is, of um, uh, November here, to get one quart of firewood. So, he's saying it's about three truckload, pickup truckload, which is fine. Um, the other thing is that there's a couple of rules that go with this that are kind of tough. First of all, you can't use anything mechanical to get the trees close to your truck. You also cannot drive in the woods with anything. Now, it says it says in the brochure that you can request to be able to use a mechanic mechanized way of getting the logs out. Now, you know the problem up there is the road is about 40 foot away from where the trees are. Now, you know, 40 foot's not bad if you're 20. Uh, 40 foot is like a mile when you're 64. So, um, I'm gonna see how this works out. I might request that I can use um, the, the machine to pull the logs closer to the road. I don't know how that would work or, you know, what it all entails, but it says that the district forester can give you a written permit to do that so I'm gonna have to check that out to see what happens with that so anyway this is so what you're viewing there is a little bit of downtown Wellsboro so it's about all there is to this one of the other things guys that I'd like to say is I had a couple people ask me about you know is there land for sale around here and stuff like that. I mean, if you look in the backdrop there, there's a lot of mountainous area here. And there is a lot of things for sale, a lot of properties for sale. However, I'll say this. When I first moved here, land was relatively cheap. The gas well industry has flipped the economy, the local economy, 
on a tent because people that were renting, like let's say a house was being rented for four, $400 a month back in the two, early 2000s, is now being rented for $1,600 a month because the people from the gas well industry, you know, they're making good money, so prices went up. Also, the gas well industry has bought a lot of property themselves, you know, business things that are along the road and stuff. And some of the prices are utterly ridiculous. I mean, uh, we just passed it. I didn't show it on the camera, but we just passed a small building. I, I want to say the building's probably 30 by 50 at the biggest, a steel building. The land is probably a quarter of an acre. And the guy wants $500,000 for it because the gas well company has deep pockets and they're willing to pay for what they need. The problem isn't so much if they buy something and leave it sit. The problem is when they rent something with the intention of being there for quite a while and you find out that they've only been there, they're only going to be there for six months. And what happens is people buy property with the intention of leasing it to the gas well people, and the next thing you know, they're paying mortgages that they could never afford to start off with because the area is sort of depressed. But uh, there is a lot of land for sale. You can see that, you know, the mountain there, just how much woods there is around here. And um, like I say, it's not. There was a time when an acre of ground was $1,000. I mean, a lot of people who own these bigger places paid a lot less than that. But the thing is, is now these same properties in the past five years have gone to $5,000 an acre, which, you know, depending upon where you're from, that may not seem like a lot of money. But if, if you're from the local area and you're living with the local economy, it can be a, a, an extreme amount of money. All what you're looking at there, those towers and stuff and tanks, all of that stuff was built in the past five years because of the gas well industry. But like I say, there's a lot of woodlands and farms. Check this out on this nice sunny day. This is beautiful. This is a species of maple here. Look how nice this is coming through here. It's like a canopy of uh, yellow or gold. guys so this is the road that I normally travel to get home it's the only road actually and you can see what we're up against with this traffic I mean these guys are taking up the whole road there's nowhere to go when they're coming down here so it's like you know tough but what's happening here is they just finished one well so they're moving this equipment to another well and then they're coming back to do another one. It's uh, supposed to be done this year. I don't know for certain what's, you know, the whole story, but... So you, you know, can imagine if you have an emergency and you're, you know, coming in the opposite direction of these trucks, how do you get over there? Because even they can't pull over very well. See, it looks like there's five trucks in front of me. Okay, guys, well, you can see I cleaned up some leaves here today. So, I got this brochure, and I'll just read it to you while I'm walking through the woods here a little bit. A permit is required to cut firewood on the Tioga State Forest. That's where we're at, Tioga County, Pennsylvania. This permit should be in your possession at all times while cutting firewood. The cost is 20 bucks per cord. Uh, permits, let me see here. Permits are issued for a minimum of one cord. A permit for one cord is good for 15 days. Two or three cords uh, permits are good for 30 days. Four and five cord permits are good for 60 days. And six to seven cord permits for 90 days. So it all so you buy according to how many cords of wood you want to pick or go cut or whatever. Firewood permits are good for standing dead and dead and down trees with the exception of black cherry. 
you are prohibited from cutting black cherry 12 inches in diameter and greater. Uh, you must be prepared to explain the location of the wood prior to receiving the permit. So you have to say where you're going to be doing the cutting. <clears throat> Driving off road or through the woods to access firewood is not permitted. So, <laughs> so in other words, if there was a forest road or a fire line going through here somewhere, you're not allowed to drive on that to get to the wood, I suppose. Firewood permits are not sold for active timber sale areas. So in other words, if the DCNR is selling timber and the guys are working cutting the timber down, you're not allowed to go work there or do any cutting there. I could understand that because, you know, there's guys felling trees so you don't know what's going to happen. Stump pipe must not exceed the diameter of the stump or 12 inches, whichever is less. So in other words, you can't leave it 12 inches high if you cut a dead tree down, higher than 12 inches. Okay, so then, there was some traffic, you wouldn't have been able to hear me. Alright, so then, um, like it says, stump pipe must not exceed the diameter of the stump or 12 inches, whichever is less. Alright? So, mechanized skidding is prohibited unless approved in writing by the district forester. 